Welcome back to View Mastery's Intro to View course. In this lesson, we'll be covering computed properties. Let's start learning. In our project, we've added a brand to our data. Now, instead of displaying just the product here, how could we display the brand along with the product? In other words, how can we display View Mastery socks? Well, we could add brand in another expression here, and this will work. It'll print out View Mastery socks. But we could also achieve this with a computed property, which we'll call title since this is the title of our product. Just like our methods, we can add an object of computed properties. So we'll write computed, then create our computed property named title, and we'll have it return this.brand plus a space plus this.product. As you can see, when we refresh, we're displaying View Mastery Socks which is our brand plus our product. Now, if we go into the console and update the value of brand, let's say to view masterful, then our computer property will update accordingly. Same with updating our product, let's say to boots. So as you can see, our computer property title runs every time its dependencies change. In this case, its dependencies are brand and product. Breaking this concept down, it might help if you imagine a computed property acting like a calculator, which is fed values, such as view mastery and socks, and then it computes with those values in order to return a new value, in this case, view mastery socks. Some things that you should know about computed properties are that they are cached, meaning the result is saved until its dependencies change. Since brand and product are both dependencies of title, if brand were to change, then title is rerun and that new value is cached. With that in mind, it's more efficient to use a computed property rather than a method for an expensive operation that you don't want to rerun every time you access it. Let's look at a more complex and practical example of how you can use a computed property. Currently, the way we are updating our image is with the update product method. We are passing our variant image into it, then setting the image to be whichever variant is currently hovered on. This works fine for now, but if we want to change more than just the image based on which variant is hovered on, then we'll need to refactor this code. So let's do that now. Instead of having image here, let's replace this with selected variant, and we'll initialize it as zero. Why zero? because we'll be setting this based on the index that we hover on. We can add index to our v4 here, like so. Then, instead of passing in the variant image, we'll pass in the index. Down here in our method, we'll pass in the index, and instead of updating this.image, we'll update this.selected variant with the index of whichever variant is currently hovered on. We'll console log index to make sure it's working properly. Now when we refresh the page and open up the console, we can see that it does work. We're logging 0 and 1 as we hover on each variant. Notice this warning here, image is not defined. That's because we deleted image from our data and replaced it with selected variant. Now let's make image into a computed property. Inside image, we'll return this.variants, which is our array of variants, and use our selected variant, which is either 0 or 1, in order to target the first or second element in that array. Then we'll use dot notation to target its image. Now you can see our image is toggling back and forth between the two variant images, just like it was before, but now with the computed property instead. Now that we've refactored the update product method to update the selected variant, we can access other data from our variants, such as these quantities they now have. Just like we did with our image, let's remove in stock from our data and turn it into a computed property instead. That way, instead of just being a Boolean, in stock can return the quantity of the selected variant. We'll put it below image, and inside of it, we'll return this.variants, and use our selected variant to grab the element we're hovered on, just like we did in image, but here we're targeting its quantity with dot notation. When we hover on the blue variant, which has a quantity of zero, in stock will evaluate to false, so we should expect to see out of stock appear. And it works just like we expected. Also notice that the button is disabled too. That's because we're still using in stock to bind the disabled attribute and the disabled button class. The only difference now is that in stock is a computed property versus a data property. For this lesson's challenge, 
Add a new Boolean data property called onSale. Then create a computed property that prints out a string using brand and product whenever onSale is true. A link to the code playground is below. You can keep watching this series on YouTube, but if you want to track your progress and access other VUE courses, head on over to ViewMastery.com. We release a new video every week. Plus, you can grab our free VUE Essentials cheat sheet. Thanks for watching.